How do you view this, and, and what is the challenge for those that are on the field today? What I think has most attracted me to this whole process is watching the political maturity of the American people. Because there was a great question during the first election as to whether or not Barack would even be elected. And after the turnout so emphatically put him in the presidency, it was interesting to watch the second turn when everybody really didn't quite know what the game would be. Well, the American people, in their maturity, declared themselves fully. We want what Barack Obama is talking about. We want the country to go in that direction. And what fascinates me is that in the face of millions of Americans expressing their desire, the whole political establishment defining its, its, its game, that there should be this lingering infestation of, uh, of, of, of really corrupt people who sit trying to dismantle the wishes of the people, the mandate that has been given to, to, to Barack Obama. And I, I don't know what more they want. The only thing left for Barack, Barack to Obama to do is to work like a third world dictator and just put all these guys in jail. <laughs> You're violating the American desire. You got Obama phone? Yes, everybody in Cleveland, no minority got Obama phone. Keep Obama in president, you know? He gave us a phone. He's gonna do more. How do you give you a phone? You, you sign up if you're, you're on full stamps, you're on social security, you got low income, you disability. I have a Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Thursday, December 13th, 2012, and I'm Darko. I'm going to continue here with an article that I covered before, but I thought I'd cover it again since I saw that video of uh, Mr. Belafonte saying that we need to work like a third world dictator and just start throwing people in gulags. So I uh, went back to the original video, which can be kind of annoying, but I think you get the point. It says here, the Obama phone is back, but this time it's real while some saw the clips of the lady implying victory for Obama means phones for everyone as perhaps exaggerated out of context right-wing propaganda is that would be preposterous right but it appears san francisco took it a little more serious as the san francisco gate reports the california public utilities commission is expected to approve within a couple of weeks a plan to offer homeless and offer uh, other poor people in california virtually free cell phones and service the plan is funded through the Federal Lifeline Program and is designed to enable these individuals to keep in touch with family, potential employers, and others crucial to improving their lives. This is great. It is transformative for homeless and low-income people, says uh, San Francisco's head of the Homeless Initiatives, adding that fundamentally, to be in the mainstream of society, you have to have a phone. Setting up the program in California has been no easy task, officials said. I would prefer it to be free, said Duff Dufty, and said he would explore other funding sources. I wanted to play this video, but I just didn't want to have to wrestle with uh, copyright infringements, even though I'm not infringing on it because it's under um, fair use for educational purposes. They like to play these games. Detroit Councilwoman to Obama, we voted for you, so give us our government bacon. So this is from December 5th. 2012. On Tuesday, Detroit Councilwoman Joanne Watson told members of the city council that since Detroit voted for Obama, the president owes the city a government bailout. Newsbusters Matt Vespa wrote, just because you help get the president reelected doesn't mean you're guaranteed loans to save your city. In fact, if such a list existed, I'd bet the most of the California's municipalities would probably be in front of you. Americans who voted for Obama now seeing Weekly job hours slash below 30 as Obamacare kicks in. The mandates for uh, businesses only apply to those working 30 hours a week or more. And while many businesses do not want to cut workers' hours, they are being forced to in order to stay afloat. This necessary action is causing businesses to lose money and became, become less competitive while at the same time destroying American jobs. Some businesses are also slashing jobs in an effort to get below the 50-employee threshold above which the bill a mandate kicks in. So across the country, we're not only seeing workers lose hours, but we're also seeing workers losing their jobs. Another video that I wanted to play but I couldn't says Jamie Foxx jokes about killing all white people in his new movie. Two weeks ago, the Oscar-winning actor made national headlines when he called President Obama our Lord and Savior. While hosting NBC's Saturday Night Live this weekend, Foxx joked about how in his new film, uh, Django Unchained, I kill all the white people in the movie. How great is that?
and you can go through and read the whole transcript he keeps saying about how black is that and black is the new white and all that uh, census shows rise in foreign born this is from the UK from the 11th the number of foreign born residents in England and Wales has risen by nearly 3 million since 2001 to 7.5 million people that means about 1 in 8 or 13 percent of residents were born outside the UK in fact London has become the first region where white British people have become a minority and many would hail this as a great thing for diversity and stuff like that um, but this is done by design uh, for control uh, by select few people which we'll get to later it says here a census shows Muslims flourish and Christians drop by a number in UK the census says that um, revealed that the Christian population of England Wales has dropped by 13 percent or 4 million of 33 million in the past 10 years also the number of people identifying themselves as non-religious rose from 7.7 .7 million to 14 million while wow, it doubled it goes on here and it says more than 70 percent of the record rise in the overall population over the past decade is produced by people who migrated into Britain it's not like they're reproducing or anything uh, anti-white policies in the British film industry I only included this because I watched it recently it's a pretty interesting uh, this guy does some interesting videos he usually does analysis of uh, movies uh, the big one is uh, Space Odyssey 2001 and then I saw this I'm like hmm, pretty interesting so I'm like, this guy must be a racist white guy, right? Just a bigot. And he's actually very intelligent, and he breaks down how he tried getting a job and basically got turned down um, because he was white. And it was all in the name of diversity and tolerance. And he goes through all the nuts and bolts. I mean, he goes in through the numbers and everything. So go in there and check it out. Uh, white's no longer the majority by 2043. By 2060, 57% of them will be non-white. The figures herald a coming divide in the population between younger and more diverse generations and older whites. It says by the end of this decade, which would be, what, 2020, uh, the Times notes that there will be no majority ethnic group among those under 18. And most of the people said that was brilliant. Um, another video that I came across, too, uh, white people came to ancient America, too. You'd be like, damn, Darko, where are you going with all this? Well, when I see in the comments, hey, just like 400 years ago, I have to just point this out, which is something that, you know, if if I wasn't living at that time and you weren't living at that time, then no one can really say. There's scientists, but then that gets kind of political. Even this right here, this science uh, about these soul train people that uh, emigrated from Europe and that um, between ice ages, uh, say that this is highly politicized. So, but for whatever it's worth. That's uh, that's what they're finding. These bones and these uh, these spear uh, spear ends were actually from Europeans that came way before the Native Americans, and even before the Asians, uh, coming from uh, you know near Alaska and that. They say the real purpose of the video is to address the current issue. The massive immigration is being pushed by globalists who claim that the white Americans should be displaced because we really don't belong here anyway. I just want to know the truth, right? Um, I don't want to be lied to and propagandized to um, when something is a falsity. I mean, I've mentioned this before. I've spent time with natives out in the West Coast briefly, and I've had a lot of respect for them, and I still do. So I'm not trying to, like, downgrade them or anything. You have to forget Britain. U.S. loves its political royalty. We could soon see another Clinton or Bush in the White House. I've heard that about Hillary Runton running. We always hear rumors about that. And then, of course, Jeb Bush. He's also, right after the election, he actually filed uh, to start to run. So it says, if you think the British monarchy is bad, well, it's got nothing on the U.S. When it comes to political dynasties, it says, look no further than Michelle Obama, it says, uh, and it is in a hypothetical 2016 Senate bid in Illinois. I didn't know that. But uh, it's interesting because um, a lot of these people actually are part of the same bloodlines. They're actually related to their British royalty, so... And then one interesting article I found was Obama Don. Team of Ivy League scientists bestows Obama unique honor of naming extinct lizard after him. The small lizard was distinguished by tall and slender teeth, a nod to Obama's good oral hygiene, scientists say, which is a bunch of shit because he actually was a big smoker and I think his teeth were kind of dirty when he first started running. But I think it has to do more with the, with the serpent people and that and the snakes or the blue bloods, as some people like to call them. That's why, you know, like someone said, there's no mistake... Uh, you know, in the color of the ties and that. So if Obama is working for these people, 
uh, I think they refer to themselves even to as the serpent people. It would make sense that they would uh, these scientists, uh, these controlled scientists, would uh, name a um, a reptile after them. Again, another interesting article that I saw is it was um, it kind of just went right in line with I mean, his videos, just kind of making itself today. Jesus lookalike kicked out a distraction to darts tournament. He goes on there and he says that. This individual, Nathan Grindle, showed up to the Cash Converters Players Championship. He became an overnight celebrity, albeit the wrong reasons. He's actually 33 years old, which is pretty interesting as well. He's a laborer, and he got a surprise when 4,000 fans in attendance erupted in song. The crowd began yelling, stand up if you love Jesus, and it reportedly distracted a Belgian player. So this moments later, security staff surrounded the Messiah doppelganger and led him out of the main area, away from the choir flash mob he was allowed to watch the match on television so it goes on here and it says it was distressing i was emotionally distraught the crowd w uh, was bullying me and picking on me i would have been okay if security hadn't made a fuss out of it says the jesus lookalike i'm being kicked out in his post-match interview phil taylor said something like if i ever see Jesu uh, jesus again i'll crucify him myself now that's just hurtful grind landed it's unknown what mix of the crowd were believers in Jesus or atheists making a mockery of the entire thing. What's also interesting is a slideshow. It's like someone said, what did they uh, uh, take pictures with a potato or something? It was just really horrible quality photos. Hard to get a good image of the guy. But it was interesting. My point was, was that uh, besides him having such a hard time and people being scared so much that they had to like kick the guy out of the tournament, um, and, and this right here, Jedi religion, the most popular alternative faith like we saw in the UK and stuff like that. Today's census show that 176,000 people in England and Wales identify themselves as Jedi Knights, making the most popular faith in other religions category in the census and the seventh most popular faith overall. But back to what I was saying about the Jesus dude. You look in the comments here from the article, who the heck are these people trying to kid? The man looks nothing like an Arab man. So... I know there's people that are more knowledgeable about this, about what is Semitic and what is not Semitic, but I do know that um, there's these people called Khazarians or Khazars. They're basically false Jews and they stole their identity. And uh, bas basically these people originated from Mongolia, Russia, uh, that part of uh, Asia, and then they emigrated to Europe. So they would actually be more white and Asiatic than Arab, but they say it looks nothing like an Arab man. So yeah, basically people go in there and say, yeah, only if he, uh, Jesus looked like a Caucasian and Arabs, uh, Jesus was Jewish and stuff like that. So it's just more of this uh, of this uh, illusion that we're, we've been taught. And for the last two minutes, I'll just finish up with this. The Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion a document uh, is one of the most important documents ever come to light in the world and can be described as a blueprint for domination of the world by a secret brotherhood, which people uh, basically have discredited and blasted as being anti-Semitic. But for what it's worth, there is new genetic research that confirms Arthur Kessler's uh, Khazar theory that Ashkenazi Jews are not the Jews of the Bible. This was actually done by John Hopkins geneticists here in 2012. It says the irony inherent in this ill-used phrase of being anti-Semitic is that the Semitic Arabs are actually among the greatest victims in the crime and fraud known as Zionism, in which Russian Jews were actually racially non-Semitic in the first half, first half of the 20th century, fostered and executed a plan to create an officially recognized Jewish homeland in Palestine. We will push Christians into wars by exploitation of their pride and stupidity, i.e. Christian uh, Zionists. They will massacre each other and thus make more space where we can place our own people. The words of a Jewish philosopher, Rabbi Marcus Eli Ravage, says, We are intruders. We are disturbers. You have not begun to appreciate the real depth of our guilt. He says, We have taken the natural world, your ideals, your destiny, and played havoc with them. We have brought discord and confusion and frustration into your personal and public life. An elder of Zion wrote a letter to a rabbi in 1492 in regards to them being expelled from Spain. He tells them to become Christians and make your sons canons and clerics so that you may destroy their churches, to make your sons merchants and doctors and lawyers and politicians. We may have to repeat World War II when we force to let Hitlerite bands sacrifice some of our people. He says the death of a few thousand Jews in exchange for world leadership is indeed a small price. 
which is why they have to take control over the schools as well to teach rewritten history. This is GGN. Thank you.